So our topics of the day, open acreage licensing policy, SALSA, 70 point performance grading index for main for prelims and quota for general category on mains perspective. So now let's move on to our first prelims topic, open acreage licensing policy. So why it is in news? The Union Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas and Skill Development and Entrepreneurship has launched NIO and MRSC which means notice for inviting offer and model revenue sharing contract for open acreage licensing policy bit round 2. Okay, so it is an auction process. So initially the government has decided for five auction rounds. Okay, now it is going to be the second auction round which was delayed for a several months. Okay, so with this government is planning to auction nearly 30,000 square kilometers of areas for exploring and production blocks. Okay, so they have decided 14 exploration production blocks for exploring hydrocarbons. Okay, so this is done by the most investor friendly help regime which means hydrocarbon exploration licensing policy regime okay so out of this 14 exploration and production blocks 10 blocks are decided by expression of interest given by the investors themselves so who are all exploring they have given the area of 10 blocks and the four blocks were carved out by the government based on the national seismic program and reassessment survey okay based on the data they have given four blocks so this is the news okay now let's see what is the background okay so before 1997 most of this oil and, and gas explorations were done by ONGC and OIL India. But most of the states have started demanding for incentives in exploring because the most of the projects are becoming unviable. So for fulfilling those demands, the government has introduced NEL, which means New Exploration Licensing Policy in the year 1997, which was continued till 2016. But what's the problem with this NEL? Okay, this NEL is only for the conventional natural gases okay it doesn't talk about the non-conventional natural gas because non-conventional natural gas was not present at that time like shale gases etc okay and it also has different licensing policy for each hydrocarbons so that is also a major problem here then it also says that government will carve out the areas for exploration and the bidders have to auction it and they have to get the areas but the problem here is with 2016, nearly 250 blocks have been given by the government, out of which 254 blocks were taken by the bidders. But out of this, 156 blocks were relinquished back to the government because of the unviability. So, it's a problem with the NLP. So, for that, they have introduced a prog program called New Domestic Pricing Policy only in the difficult or acreage licensing areas okay so in that the government will give special incentives for the most difficult exploring areas okay even that is not fulfilling the then government in introduced help which means hydrocarbon exploration licensing policy so why it is important this is a single licensing policy and also it has expression of invest in interest which means the investors can choose the location of their own choice okay and added to that the government has also introduced open acreage licensing policy in which the bidders can choose their choose their area and national depository data registry which means it shows the potential area for the exploration of natural gases based on the seismic seismic studies okay that will help for this petroleum exploration so this is the background regarding this open acreage licensing policy now let's see why these reforms are important so we must know that so india is the third largest oil importer country okay but the problem here is most of the oil are imported we are aiming to reduce this oil import bill from 10 percent to 67 percent by the year 2022 okay but still the energy demand is around 81 percent by imports okay this already we had seen that this NELP challenges and exploration production policies were already a challenges so that's why we have chose for this help regime okay then this production sharing mechanism was initially used by the government which was to get maximum revenue but now we have shifted to the revenue sharing mechanisms in which the government will have most of the revenues as well as the investors will have the more option for investments so hence we are choosing this reforms to have more investments as well as 
the domestic production in order to reduce the import of hydrocarbons from outside countries okay now how this help will help okay now let's see so it is a single license regime for all conventional and non conventional fuels so it covers all the hydrocarbon compounds okay then it will have the increased productions based on the investor friendly mechanisms and it also gives more responsibility to the investors in order to take care of the environment facilities okay then they promote more investments jobs and self sufficiency because india does not want to depend on foreign countries and it also increases ease of doing businesses and reduced royalty which was a problem in with nelp and also there is no cess mechanisms and revenue sharing mechanism which also helps to reduce the problem with the nelp mechanism okay now they had given marketing and pricing freedom to the bidders because initially the government will fix the rate of this hydrocarbons now they had given the independence to the investors okay and now apart from that we have expression of interest auctions and online bidding programs so these are the important reforms made in this help to, in to increase the production of hydrocarbons as well as reduce the import of hydrocarbons to india okay so this is based on open acreage licensing policy now let's move on to our next topic salsa so what is salsa means that is sub glacial antarctic lakes scientific assess so this was a two year program to start in the year 2016 with nearly 14 scientists from various us institutions they are seeing the they are actually drilling the antarctic areas to see whether any life form is available okay that is termed as the hunt for life below antarctic sea okay now what is the present news okay they have discovered a lake called lake mercer which is a subglacial lake which is hydrologically active and it encompasses a nearly 60 to square miles below 3500 feet okay this is the second of its type after lake willem which was actually discovered in the year 2013 this lake mercer is located 370 miles in southern side of the south pole okay now what they had said is this is not a new discovery it was initially discovered a decade before by a satellite study but we haven't explored but recently in the last december we have explored this subglacial lake okay so now what are the studies they are going to do the salsa is an extremely fresh water lake okay this mercer is a fresh water lake and they had used a high pressure hot water drill to reach the lake so now they have reached the lake but what they are going to do in future is they are going to collect waters and sediments or sediments from the bottom of the lake and microbial dna to check whether any life form is available in this lake and also to check the to ice from the top of the lake to know the nature of the ices above the lake surfaces then for the first time they have used a remote vehicle to submerge into the lake and take videos and cameras which of 4k video range okay and they have also introduced another instrument called ctd instrument which is nothing but conductivity temperature and depth instrument that is going to read the temperature and structure of water and they are also going to compare the habitat of the lakes compared to the deep ocean deep water habitat in mars as well as in the moons of saturn and jupiter okay and it also helps to understand another lake called lake willem which is of fragile ecosystem which is of very pure ecosystems and it's isolated and it also helps to build the future of antarctic area which is still a mysterious one so this is the most important perspective of this salsa mission which is going to it is an ongoing program okay now let's move on to our next topic 70 point performance grading index okay recently ministry of human resource development has launched 70 point performance grading index program to assess the quality of school education in all the states okay so out in this program there is a 70 parameters which scores nearly 1000 marks each parameters will have 10 to 20 points per parameters okay the most interesting thing is all the 35 states and union territories have already confirmed for this participation in this index and they use 70 parameters some of the parameters like teachers vacancies infrastructures leaderships their cleanliness sanitation these are taken into consideration and ministry of human resource development has also given many other informations like they are going to print more ncert books in the future nearly 6 crores which is of greater demand in recent times so this is helpful for private institutions and parents to get the cheaper books okay now 
what are the highlights of this index now they said the index will give a correct picture of states positions the states will know where they are standing compared to other states so this will help to assess the area of deficiencies and give a targeted interventions to reduce the deficiencies and provide a level playing field so that will enhance a fair competition as well as the improvement of all the states developing together okay another important perspective is niti ayog with its school education quality index is also going to use 33 parameters out of these 70 parameters produced by ministry of human resource development and in another initiative is with ncert and hrd ministry they are going to institute a central institute for assessment and hand holding of states this assessment will give a comprehensive method of all these in education institutions and it also hand holds states to improve their standard in educations okay and what are the other highlights they are going to give schools with digital board in order to increase e learning mechanism in schools and another initiative is they are going to start a four year integrated bachelor of education degree in all school center and state level universities and also private universities if they are opt to do four year integrated courses and this will help to have a comprehensive experience for teachers from class 1 to 10 and it is based on internship programs and teacher training institutes so these are the basic for this four year integrated bachelor of education degree so this all these mechanisms will help to have a well equipped teachers and have a parity in all center state and private institutions modern pedagogical tools for developing students and e learning mechanisms and also helps to compare with other global best practices so hence it is an important topic for prelims okay now let's move on to our main topic quota for general category so why it is in use okay so ministry of social justice has introduced 124th constitutional amendment bill 2019 in lok sabha and it is also passed and now it is also passed in rajya sabha if it is accepted by half of the state if it is ratified by half of the states it will become an act okay so according to this bill that is the 10% reservations for general category in economically weaker sections so once it is become an act it will change the article 15 and 16 which is based on reservation for employment as well as educations okay but this economically weaker session will be determined by each state so it depends on each state who are going to be the economically weaker sections and this reservations will be applicable in all state and center education institutions jobs as well as in private higher educations so this one is important in news but now we are going to see what is reservation so reservation is given for development of a particular homogeneous group okay in india 15% reservation is given for scheduled caste and 7.5 for scheduled tribes 27 for other backward class for general category and open category it is 50.5 percentage so this is a reservation criteria in india so what is the background for this reservations for so india the reservation started from the pre independence era of pune pact 1932 between a father of nation mahatma gandhi and leader of people without nation which is mr ambedkar so between them it was signed so it was to improve the standard of depressed classes so in that pact one of the criteria is reservation so that started the reservation mechanism and in constitutions we have also given article 340 which says about socially and educationally backward people to given represents give reservations and then the ninth schedule was introduced into the constitution by first constitutional amendment act 1951 in which the reservation is also a criteria which prevents supreme court from in from judicial scrutiny into that schedules and later on the government also formed the first backward backward class commission by kalka kalekar in the year 1953 and it submitted its report in 1955 but this commission report was rejected because it does not give any objectified identity to the backward classes then again this backward class commission was formed in the year 1979 by bp mandal and he has submitted the report in the year 1980 after a decade the government this vp singh government has started to scrutinize the report and they had given 27% reservation for obcs okay in the year 1990s again in 1991 nasim rao government has said that there must be two criterias for this obc one is giving preference to the 
poor obcs that means creamy layer another one is 10% for economically weaker section of higher caste so this was started in the year 1991 but supreme court rejected this provision because constitution only recognizes the this educationally and socially backward caste not economically backward people again based on this they have introduced creamy layer and in 1992 mandal case they had said this creamy layer must be introduced changing the article 16 okay then according to this they have also constituted ramnandan committee in order to identify the creamy layers within the other backward classes okay now based on this perspectives they have also started national commission for backward classes in the year 1993 but in the same year the indra shani case had came up that also said that the constitution has determined only the social and educationally backward caste not economically backward caste and there is an exception to a particular state called tamil nadu in the year 1994 they have introduced 76th amendment act which provides 69% reservations for tamil nadu based on special conditions and at the la- the least one is 2007 which is the judicial review of ninth schedule so supreme court had said that any inclusion of ninth schedule after 24th 24th april 1973 will be subjected to judicial review and it is not escaping any judicial scrutiny so this is the history of this general category or otherwise this obc categories okay now let's see what are the pros and cons so what are the arguments for this quota reservation they had said that the quota must be reserved for poor people because it is not based on equality equity must also be considered so poor people and economically backward people also must get reservations and they also said that the it must help the urban and rural poor people because they are mostly they are economically backward so economically backward reservation will help to improve the livelihoods of urban and rural poor people and they also helps to reduce undue benefits which is going to reach the higher income group of these obcs and sc st communities and they also stop the rush to sc st and obc status we recently seen recent times like marathas jats and Pat- patels are actually rushing to get obc status in order to get reservations and they also said that this existing reservation mechanism is inadequate to fulfill or main or mainstream this sc st communities so hence the economic reservation is also important and this unemployment is not subject to only to the poorer people or sc st people it is also there in major communities and general category hence this quota reservation is important and it benefits educated youth what they had said is this caste based reservation is temporary which was introduced only till 10 years but it is even extended more than 70 years okay hence a reform must be needed in this one and other things are like this non poor beneficiaries getting reservation is actually increasing the social divide which can be seen in this Pat- patel strike and maratha strike or jat strikes and what they had said is all these reservations have not prevented the ill treatment towards sc and sts or dalits hence there must be a reforms to get reprieve for this deprived people okay now let's see the arguments against quota so what they had said is it will play a fall on supreme court judgment of 50% cap so it will again increase another 10% which is 60% so it is going to violate the judgment of supreme court and they what they had said is the criteria is given for this economically weaker section is they must have at least below income below 8 lakhs and they must have acres below 5 5 acres but this will actually accommodate 90% of indians even in the budget they had said that most of the farmers in india are having lesser than 1 acre of land so hence it is going to cover 90% of indians and in constitution it does not mention any economically weaker section so once we implement this it is going to be constitutionally violative and what they had said is the purpose of reservation is social justice it is not a poverty alleviation program or economic program it is a social justice program which wanted to abolish the untouchability which was practiced for a longer time this is the basic structure of constitution also and according to the former secretary of india ps krishna who is very much imp- renowned for the social justice he said that this quota will actually violate the constitution there must need to be an economic programs for this 
economically weaker sections like giving scholarships, loans and employment opportunities, skill development, but not reservations. Hence, we already know that this reservation process is becoming more unsustainable in recent times. And what they had said is the government jobs in central as well as state are actually reducing year by year. Okay. Also, even the public sector banks recommendations also getting reduced. Hence, this is getting unviable. And one more thing is, this reservation is actually a 1960s and 70s concept. It is not applicable for the present day. Hence, what I had said is, there should not be a flimsy or a whimsy of this political gimmicks rather than provide a sustainable as well as a structural benefit for the economically weaker sections not to deprive people of what they deserve. Okay, so with this, I conclude today's topic. Please like, share and subscribe to your YouTube channel. Thank you.